Hi guys, I'm Matt. And I'm Xavier. Today we're going to be showing you prac number one, medicinal coordination chemistry, copper two complex with medicinal uses. I'll be running you through the practical, practical work. And I'll be jotting down all the measurements, all the observations, all the hazards, all the aims, the title, the date, and getting you good marks in your lab assessment. The first step of the experiment is we're going to weigh out the copper sulfate pentahydrate. First, we've got to tear the balance with the measuring flask. In this case, it's a 100 mil beaker. So just wait until the balance shows zero, and we're ready, ready to weigh out our first reagent. Use a spatula to put the reagent into the beaker, being careful, watching the mass rise. Aiming for three grams. Close the doors on the balance and let it settle. And then record the mass in the balance. In this case, 3.0590 grams. Okay. All right, the next step is measuring out our water using a measuring cylinder. Aiming for 25 mils, so we'll fill it basically up from the bottle and then use a pipette to finish it off. Slowly adding it using the pipette and checking that the bottom of the meniscus is in line with the 25 mil mark. So once again with the water, record the volume that you've measured out in your lab book. So the next step is to dissolve your copper sulfate in the water. We're going to add a stirring bar, magnetic stirring bar. Pour the water in and we'll transfer this vessel to a hot plate, heat it up and stir it. So we'll pop this on the hot plate, get the magnetic stirrer moving. We've got the temperature set to just over 100. We're going to get the water to almost boiling point until all the copper sulfates dissolve. So the next step is weighing out our glycine. Once again, we're gonna tear the balance with our vessel on it. Wait till it hits zero. Use a clean spatula to weigh out the glycine. We're aiming for two and a half grams. So we carefully weigh it out, approaching two and a half grams. Close the doors of the balance and let it settle. And then record the mass in your lap book. Here we have 2.5034 grams. So now we're going to dissolve up the glycine in hot sodium hydroxide, two molar. Twelve milliliters using a measuring cylinder. Once again, get close to the mark and then top it up with a pipette. Watching the bottom of the meniscus and making sure that lines up with the 12 mil mark. So I'll add this hot sodium hydroxide into the glycine solution. And give it a mix. Yeah, so just remember as you do the experiment to record observations, uh, a couple of really easy ones to record are the appearance, colour and uh, texture of reagents you use and if that changes when you add them to solvents. So in our case, our copper sulphate, the blue crystals, and when we added H2O, we got a clear blue solution. Our glycine, white crystals, and when we added sodium hydroxide, 
we've got a clear colourless solution. Recording these observations as you go will make it a lot easier to do your lab reports later on. So after a couple of minutes of heating and stirring, we'll check that both solutions are clear, meaning that all the reagents have dissolved. Once this is the case, we're going to remove the magnetic stirring bar using a magnetic pole. And we're going to add our glycine in sodium hydroxide into our copper sulfate water solution. Notice a definite colour change to the solution. Notice a definite colour change to the solution and observe whether any precipitate was formed. Once the solution's cooled basically to room temperature or thereabouts, we'll put it in an ice bath, which will cool rapidly and encourage crystal growth. All right, so we can record our observation for adding the copper sulfate solution to glycine solution. We saw a color change from blue to deep purple and we still had a clear solution, no precipitate formed. Alright, the next part of this prac is collecting our product via vacuum filtration. So we'll set up a Buchner funnel and a vacuum flask, plug in the vacuum hose, make sure it's sealed. Turn the vacuum on slightly and wet the filter paper with a bit of water just to test the vacuum level. So now we'll remove our solution from the ice bath and you can see that a lot of precipitate has formed while it's cooled down. And that's what we want to collect using the vacuum filter. Okay, so now we're going to transfer our product into the vacuum funnel using a clean spatula. So we're just going to gently turn the vacuum on and that'll pull any excess solvent through the filter paper into the vacuum flask. we're drying out our product. So here we're using a little bit of water to transfer the last of our product from the reaction vessel into the vacuum filter. Okay, so the next part of the prac is recrystallizing the product using boiling water. So the first step is collecting our dried crude crystals from the vacuum filter setup. Transfer these into a clean beaker. Once we have all of the crude products into our clean beaker, we're going to get some boiling water off the steam bath and carefully add it into our crude product. At this point, we just want to add enough to dissolve all of the crude crystal. So 
So add a little bit, mix it gently, check that all the crystals have dissolved into solution. So once all the crystals are dissolved in hot water, we'll add just a touch more to make sure that we don't get any precipitating out when we gravity filter the solution. So everything's nicely dissolved, clear solution. So our final product should stay dissolved in the solution for as long as it's hot. Pour it all through the filter funnel and wait for it to come through. We can use a little bit of hot water to transfer the last of our solution. And wait for it to run through the filter. So once all the solutions run through the gravity filter, we can remove the beaker, transfer it back to the ice bath to cool, and this should precipitate out a new crop of purified crystals. So just remember as you go, record your observations so we can record the cooling of our copper sulfate and glycine solution. We got blue crystals forming. We can also record um, dissolving the crude products. H2O, we got a clear blue solution and once we cooled the recrystallization solution, we can record the appearance of our final product. So once the solution is cooled and crystals are formed, we're gonna transfer it back into a clean vacuum filter setup. We'll transfer it into the Buchner funnel, use a small amount of vacuum to pull through the solvent. So we're going to use a little bit of acetone to aid the transfer of our product into the vacuum filter. Turn on the vacuum a little bit to pull that acetone through. Uh, with the remainder of our 20 ml of acetone, we just give the crystals a little wash. Pull the acetone through under vacuum. That'll dry out our product and we'll collect it. Leave it in a vacuum desiccator for a week to dry it out completely. And then we'll record the mass, calculate the percentage yield, and record details of the appearance of our product. So this is the final product that we've got after recrystallizing. You can see it's a blue powdery uh, sort of complex. So 